All right, welcome to the Harvard Ceramics Program, and this is an example of a basic tour around our studio. Here we are in our main studio, and this studio uh, tends to have classes that are 20 person in size, and you can see behind me many of the class shelving that is marked per the class name. So if you're looking for your class shelf, you would go there. Um, we also have over here um, behind me, you can see right to the right of the sink, we have a fire extinguisher. And it's also where we typically keep all the mops and mop heads. And you'll be using those when you clean up after class. Over here, we have um, an example of our classroom calendar. And that is a calendar that is listed outside of every classroom so that you can see when you come in outside of class time if a room is available for you to be able to work in. Um, there's almost always a room available. Um, if not, then, you know, you might have to wait for a wheel for a while or whatnot, but um, just take a look around um, uh, to each of the classrooms before you get settled for the day. Um, in this room near our wedging boards, you'll always see buckets uh, color coordinated up for porcelain, white stoneware, and brown stoneware. And those are clays that are referred to as cone 10. And those clays are our most popular ones, which is why we have them out in these barrels. And I'll note other clays that are in the studio as we walk around, but those are most likely the ones that you'll be using in class if you are taking a throwing class. So here we have um, our corresponding barrels that are used for slurry. So that's all the little bits of clay or watery clay that you just cannot um, recycle yourself. You'll learn something or you know something uh, called wedging and wedging is going to allow you to um, make the clay usable again. And that's gonna be really cost saving for all of us. And it's also gonna make for more clay for all of us to use. Behind me, you can see our sink, and there are two um, parts of the sink. One is a settling side, and one is a rinsing side. We cannot put clay down the sink, so it's really important that anything uh, that you're using that has clay on it, that you're either recycling it, putting unusable clay or slurry into the barrels behind me, or you're sieving the, um, say, container of uh, muddy water with a sponge, so only the muddy water goes into that settling tank. Over a while, that's going to settle, thus the name, and then one of our staff is going to have to scrape all that out, and we have it um, removed from the studio. So it's a really dirty job, so make their lives much easier, and take your time uh, to recycle, or um, reconstitute as much clay as possible. Uh, you'll see buckets behind me and wear boards uh, and even these little um, wonderful plaster bats here. These for throwers are available so that you can put this right at your wheel and any clay that's like really gushy or a little too wet, while you're throwing, you could have it on here and that plaster is gonna wick away some of that moisture and make your um, clay much easier to wedge up at the end of your session. The wheels that you're seeing in the studio, uh, these are all, believe it or not, um, reconstituted or no, re, well, I guess like DIY'd. Um, these used to be book uh, holders from dorms at Harvard. And uh, these uh, uh, carts are what you can put your materials on, your tools, in addition to your uh, wheel. Uh, but note here, this is how we would wanna leave your workspace at the end of the day. We want to um, have cleaned the wheel, put, turn the wheel off, put the foot pedal up on the wheel head, and then put the stool not on the wheel head, just in case someone didn't turn that wheel off, that could kill somebody. Uh, you want to put that wheel, uh, the stool rather, on the cart. And then you would take a mop and mop all around that area, sponging down that cart and your throwing wheel. 
Um, I know at first it may seem really like a lot of work to clean these things, but believe me, you give yourself the time, it's gonna become like no problem. You're gonna be able to do it really quickly. So right here in the hallway, you will see a poster board with all our staff. Um, we have office staff, we have lab technicians. Those are people specialized in recycling clay, glazes, etc. We have our wonderful work exchange program um, that does so many different jobs around the studio. So um, get to know their faces and get to know them because they're fabulous. Walking down the hallway, we'll see this is not updated right now, but this is our uh, evening and weekend monitors. So if you come in uh, during the weekend and you wanna know who is the staff person um, in charge uh, that, that day or half day, you wanna come here and find their face and then go try and find them. Uh, most people are familiar uh, with a lot of the people who work here, so that shouldn't be a problem. In here we have our kitchen, and uh, the kitchen is lovely. Uh, it's a great space to be able to sit down. We do have a refrigerator, but it is only used for uh, storing things for that day. So anything that's there at the end of the day is gonna get tossed out. And if you're putting condiments or half and half or cream or oat milk or whatever, that's gonna be considered public. There's no like leaving that for any length of time. Um, uh, and being able to store it. We just don't have the room and we have over 300 students. So we have a lovely table here. You're welcome to um, eat at. We have handmade mugs and plates and all those things that you can use, uh, which is lovely. Uh, but we ask you to clean up after yourselves. And here we have our library. You're more than welcome to go through our library, take a look. Um, it's on our system, so just make sure to put it back. And then behind me here, we have our shared computer. Now this computer can be used to check your cubic inches. That'll make sense maybe a little bit later, um, but to do some basic checking um, online for something. It can be used for buying, going to our registration site and buying products if you need. Um, just uh, see if you can use it and any problems with that uh, computer, you would wanna come to the main office and let us know. In this room, this is our large sculpture room. And this class uh, handles classes of about 12 to 15 people. And it could be working from a figure model, it could be sculpting animals, it could be working with slabs or architectural forms. We also have a Harvard class called Graduate School of Design um, that uh, will be using that, this room at times. So it's a real mixed space. Um, we have uh, the classes that only use um, this room are located in here. So you would look for your class um, shelving here. And then in addition, we also have two different kinds of clays in this room available to you. Um, I should have mentioned the slab roller in the other room. We have a small slab roller here and a small wedging table for use here. Uh, the clays we have in this room is T1, that's our sculpture body. And then we will have a terracotta as well. Now terracotta is a low fire clay not a cone 10 clay. So it is extremely important that that clay never goes into our high fire reduction um, or it will turn into melted chocolate. It's terrible. And then to have to scrape it off the shelves. So this room, if that main um, studio was being used, uh, we, it could be for a class. Sometimes we have visiting artists that'll be using that room then you can find a wheel in this room called the throwing room to use. With the same idea, this room is called the hand building room and contains no wheels, but is open space for people who are um, working sculpturally or working with hand building to be able to find some space during open studio time. So this row here, this is called the resident artist. And the resident artist, we have two different programs. One is a program where people apply to it and um, a 
jurors uh, from across the country will pick them and they get spaces two to four years. They're usually people coming right, or they're always people coming right out of our program. Another program is called the Artist in Resident Program, and that's somebody who's invited here, uh, cost-free, to work with us for a year. And our current um, Artist in Resident, Audrey, is located, or is about to move in uh, to a space here, so we're very excited. These spaces are um, not available to like go into or take from. We don't wanna take their tools or, or touch their work, but they're very excited about you coming down, take a walk down this lane, and just like look at all the different kind of work that's being made in the studio. It's pretty cool. In the same vein, there's something called independent artists. And uh, in this row, the same idea, people apply to it. You'll see this semester a call go out if somebody wants to apply. And uh, this is for people who have uh, completed the electric kiln certification, which is a test that um, you take an orientation for and it shows that you can uh, work independently in the studio. Once you get past that testing series, you can apply to one of these um, spaces and you have that for six months. So it's just really nice to be able to have a little private space um, to be able to work in and might be something of interest. There is an additional rent fee uh, in addition to the um, uh, tuition that you pay. So in this area, we have our clay cage. Whoa, let's see. These are all the clays that we have um, to be used and only staff go into that to be able to replenish uh, the different barrels that are out in the studio. If you find a barrel that's low, you should either come to the main office or find the monitor on duty to let them know that more clay needs to get put in it. So this space in here, this is our beautiful kiln room. And on this side, we have all our electric kilns. And our electric kilns are kind of like giant toaster ovens that go really, really hot. And um, we typically use these um, for uh, the use of bisque. And bisque is the first firing we do to the work. Um, if you're in a class each week, your TA will collect the work that needs to go through this first firing and it'll go through the bisque firing and it'll come out in a semi-fired state. It's just fired enough so that it's not easy for us to break, but it's still absorbent so that we can glaze it. So this is where all that happens. And then there's also cone six glazes that are uh, used and fired in these kilns. Also low fire on occasion will be fired in these kilns as well. This is a hot box. This is used for um, when you have pieces that uh, might need some extra drying. We do have hair dryers throughout the studio as well. A lot of the mold makers will use that hot box uh, to dry their molds. On this side of the studio, we have our uh, gas reduction uh, kilns. And the one directly behind me is called the Bailey. It's a smaller size and it is fired to cone 10 or around 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. And as does this large kiln over here. Now that one, once the semester gets going and all these shelves are filled with work waiting to go into the kilns, we'll go from that smaller Bailey to this one and start firing that. It's a lot of work, it takes days to load the kiln, it takes a long day to fire it and then a couple of days to cool and then unload. So it's a multi-day process. So it's a lot to um, consider overall. The um, kiln right behind me is called the soda kiln. And that is a specialty firing where soda ash is introduced um, as a liquid into the firing and it vaporizes and coats the pots. Um, that kind of firing, due to the amount of work involved, is done by Denny McLaughlin primarily. Uh, and the ways you can be involved in that are either sign up for his class, Explore Soda, which is taking place this fall, or you can uh, sign up for a soda workshop 
uh, which is offered every semester. And I believe the ones this semester are full right now. You could um, bring your work in here and put it on the shelves that are marked soda, um, which wherever I put a piece on a shelf in here, that's where it's gonna go. So this is intended for soda. This is intended for cone 10 Bailey and so on and so forth. So uh, you can put it on the soda, but I always say check in a couple of weeks. If it's not getting in that kiln, just move it over to the cone 10 reduction side. There is also a, a burn kit and fire extinguisher located in this room. I did, I did skip by um, our uh, mm, uh, first aid boxes. Uh, first aid boxes that are located in uh, the main studio, the kitchen. Um, not sure if there's one on this side. Yep, there is. There's another one there. So if you get hurt for any reason, um, you have something to access. Uh, another first aid box here in the kiln room as well as an eye wash station. We always want to keep this door to the kiln room closed because sometimes we open the uh, garage door to the outside and we don't want any visitors coming in through that door and all our wonderful air conditioning and heat to go away. This room here is a mold making and plaster room and this room is only for those that are in that class or people who have taken it before and are certified to use it. Um, it's a small room and it's very important that people using this room know what they're doing because plaster and clay does not mix for the most part. All right, and then as we move into the bisque area, you'll notice in here all of the different shelves are marked with class names again. So you're able to look for your class name and start to look for your bisque. Now, Hopefully your work was put in a kiln by your TA and then the person who unloaded the kiln saw that it was all your class work and knew to put it out on that shelf. Every once in a while, you may get your work into what we would call a mixed kiln. And then that becomes like a giant hunt for our staff to try and figure out where it should go. So how you sign your work is very important in this studio. You wanna think about whether you want a stamp, whether you want a signature. In your class, you'll be asked to tell us how you're going to sign your work. Um, and that is going to be on a list that we can hang near these shelves that are gonna help our staff get your work to the right place. And here, we have, um, this is a spray booth and this is used for spraying on glaze, you're going to be taught by your instructors about all the different choices we have for glaze in the studio, primarily cone 10. And uh, though there are wonderful glazes uh, such as cone six, seen here next to our eyewash station and another first aid. Oh, um, there's so many different things to try. So. Uh, this area here, after you've glazed, is our cubic inch station. And here is where you're going to uh, measure and record your work. And this is a system that um, we keep track of not only what you have glazed, but also what actually got fired and in what kiln. It's pretty sophisticated. So um, you, there is a whole video on using this and you'll uh, be taught how to use this in class. Um, when you have questions, just please ask a um, staff member. So here is our uh, glaze room and we have, we're kind of working on it a little bit right now, uh, but we've got a number of buckets. We've uh, got a beautiful sink system that you're going to see has a very specific rinse system. You start at one end and you work your way to that final clean rinse. And the reason for that is um, that we have a lot of metals that we use in the glaze, say copper, cobalt, that we do not want to go down the sink. 
So it's really important that um, we uh, follow these rules so that uh, the stuff that we use on our glazes does not leach into the environment. This room is called our materials room and is probably a place you're not going to go unless you were in um, the materials, uh, the clay and glaze class, or if you are one of our staff. Down this hallway, many of you will have lockers. Uh, the lockers are often shared. Uh, you can buy like at Walmart or whatnot, dividers if that helps you, but we don't put locks on the lockers and we've never had a problem. So as long as it's, you know, you use it just a place to put your tools during the week and simple things, you should be fine. Uh, right here in the middle of the hallway, we have our um, restrooms are located and then a fountain that is filtered for your water bottles and an eye wash station. Continuing to walk down. I'm back in the main studio and right behind me, you're going to see the locker list. And that when you first get here is where you're gonna look for your name. It's alphabetically uh, done and you will find your locker. And if there's any problem with that, you just wanna to come to the main office and let us know. And since I'm here and doing the full go around, again, near our, I'm back at our slurry barrels in the main studio, and here we see a first aid kit and another eye wash station. So thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful semester.